welcome to High Tech Heroes, the program that takes you behind the scenes of today's high tech industries, where you can meet the people and examine the ideas creating tomorrow's technology. And now, coming to you from the studios of Foothill College, high atop the mountains overlooking Silicon Valley, here's your host, Sherwin Gooch. Hello, I'm Sherwin Gooch. Welcome to High Tech Heroes. Our guest this week is backed by popular demand. He was born in Minneapolis and attended the University of Minnesota, where he received bachelor's and master's degrees in computer science. After graduating, he served three years as a programmer for Control Data Corporation, and then spent five years at the Minnesota Educational Computer Consortium, affectionately known as MEC where he helped develop a gigantic cyber-based time-sharing system serving over 100,000 clients. Feeling adventurous, our guest then spent a year teaching English in Taipei. Upon returning from the Far East, our guest took a position with Atari Incorporated, where he became responsible for the entire operating system for Atari's 8-bit line of home computers. Retaining the desire to tilt at the computer utility windmill, our guest moved to Packet Technologies, where he helped develop a wide area network capable of distributing television, high bandwidth two-way data, and telephone signals. Finding that consumers were being effectively duped into buying tiny microcomputers lacking software, rather than pooling the same money to buy gigantic computers with software to do anything imaginable, our guest moved to Apple Computer, where he managed the IBM Connectivity Group. Being interested and accomplished in many visual arts, including painting, directing, and photography, our guest has recently become Vice President of Engineering for Cybernetic Arts, where he is developing video synthesizers. So now it's my pleasure to welcome to our program one of the world's foremost video synthesis, Mr. Hud Nordine. Hello, Hud, and welcome hey. to High Tech Heroes. Hi. Hey. So, it's nice to be on this side of the cameras for a change, or at least kind of nice. Yeah, well, I understand you do direct. So, um, you know, a lot of people asked uh, to have you come back. You showed, among other things, a uh, video synthesizer that, that uh, you had last time, mm -hmm. and uh, that's mostly what the interest was about. In fact, uh, in Urbana-Champaign, uh, Howard Noble, one of our older viewers, uh, expressed uh, frustration, I guess you'd say, at the Todd Rundgren episode because mm -hmm. he said he watched it expecting he'd learn more about video synthesis, but he didn't learn anything like he did from yours. So. Well, he, le he learned about Todd. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, he didn't. He didn't realize who Todd was. Oh. I guess that's why he was, uh, was uh, not impressed. Anyway, so I understand you're a director. Want to direct yeah, some? I'm a director. Um, yeah, and I'd like to break through the uh, fourth wall here for a moment and do some meta television. Um, some people have, have asked me what a director does or a television director, and uh, it's a little bit different than a film director. A television director sits in a control room that's a little bit uh, off this stage. Instead of a canvas chair yelling cut and roll, he's uh, monitoring a bunch of equipment and uh, basically guiding the uh, uh, creation of the show. We do our show live on tape, which means that we just run a recording tape and uh, what happens happens, except that uh, we have multiple video sources, like three cameras that are in this room. Well, I mean, let's see, let's see him do something. Well, uh, for instance, at, at this point in time, a director would probably be doing something like this. I can see on a monitor in here, usually I have a whole bank of monitors to look at, uh, I can see a head and shoulder shot of the guest. And at this point, I uh, would probably do something like this, uh, CG, ready the guest input. Um, camera two, stand by on a two shot, ready the input, or insert, or insert. And that should put my name right over here. I guess it goes this way. Uh, ready to lose the insert, stand by two, lose the insert, take two. And we're over on this camera too, uh, a two shot that I called for that was hidden in there. Um, the point I wanted to make was that uh, there's a large crew here, uh, some 15 people that uh, do a great job usually. When the show looks good, it's because those 15 people did a good job. And uh, when the show doesn't look good, it's because the director screwed up. So I wanted to make that point. And uh, it's also, it's also uh, quite a power trip. For instance, ready, fade to black. I can do something like this, fade to black. Okay, don't adjust your sets, we're still here. This is a concept I have called cable radio, but uh, Sherwin, do you think we should bring the uh, well, listeners I think, I back? I think we should like, come back on. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's make the listeners viewers ready to fade okay. up on three. And now back to our fade regularly up. scheduled program. Okay, we're back. Anyway, so yeah, speaking of, of uh, directing high-tech heroes, I'd like to take this opportunity to mention that you know, uh, a lot of celebrities, if you, you know, if you say hello to them or something, it's like it's not polite. 
but uh, we're not celebrities, we're engineers. So if you see us around, yeah. you know, say hello. Please. Please, yeah. So you brought along some video synthesis uh, still lifes, right? Oh, yeah. Photographs or something? Yeah, before we get into the uh, computer-based stuff, I thought I'd uh, show off some photographs mm -hmm. I have. And uh, if some camera wants to zoom in on that. Um, I forget the titles of these. I have some uh, uh, 500 artworks now. Uh, I think this is called Lace, but it's uh, an example of video synthesis. Looks kind of like a G-clef to me. Yeah. Well, those. you want to take the output? You know, yeah, that's fine, yeah. You can stack them. Mm -hmm. uh, failing Falling, I believe, this is called. These, these things are all based on mathematics, so they're, uh, for the most part, relatively abstract. Yeah, well, what exactly is video synthesis? What is video synthesis? Similar to... Uh, uh, audio synthesis, which I know you're involved with. Here. Was, let's, I was. Let's throw another one up in case they can uh, uh, catch it. Um, video synthesis is similar to audio synthesis. The synthesized keyboards that so many people are familiar with these days that can sound like a variety of instruments. And in fact, you can create new instrument sounds on them uh, fairly simply. And that's my goal of video synthesis is to create out of mathematics the same as an audio synthesizer to create video output instead of audio output. So you create pictures instead of music with right. uh, mathematics as a fundamental base. Right, and it should be right. just as easy to use. Well, I hope so. I hope another so. one. So now, did you discover any, uh, any special uh, optical illusions or anything? Um, yeah, there's some, some effects that I found quite, quite remarkable. Let me put these back. Yeah. Um, there, there was one in particular that just, just alternated different colors um, on an NTSC screen or on the monitor. Uh, just a full, full field of, uh, uh, say, yellow, followed immediately by the next frame of a full field of blue. And when you alternated those at just the right frequency, your uh, probably visual cortex seemed to recognize objects so, in the, in the so flashing colors. If I understand this, this is like a strobe light effect. It's a strobe light. Except that you're going between different colors. Right, and then I had I had programmatic control so, over the colors, so, so I could it, easily... Does it matter which color? Uh, different colors seem to have different effects. Sometimes you would see distinct grid lines and sometimes uh, circular objects and sometimes mm -hmm. concrete so objects. As like if there was some faces. sort of uh, frequency coding or something in the optic nerve right, or the visual right. cortex. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. Another neat one was uh, uh, some, some counter-rotating sort of pinwheels, a, a whole array of them uh, rotating against each other that... Uh, uh, Although the, the, the spinning things were stationary on the screen, they were spinning but mm -hmm. not moving, the appearance was as if the whole thing was drifting across the screen. Well, maybe, uh, maybe something you can show that to us. But basically you're saying that there's all rotational motion, right. but you see translational motion. Right. Somehow and a residue. And at some, different some speeds it would move in different directions. Yeah. Some way that you sense uh, rotation. And the colors seem to make a difference too. Oh, and that also as well. Yeah. Or maybe it was the brightness and darkness. Side. Okay. So now you brought along... Uh, a collage of uh, video synthesis stuff so we don't have to go as slow as the pictures. Now we right. have something uh, on tape, Mr. Yeah, we Bill? have a tape to roll. So, Mr. Bill, let's roll that tape. Hmm, what's that? That's uh, video synthesis. That's just a little opening shot to get you in the mood. Uh -huh. This is some 120 uh, synthesized images. These, all, these are all based on mathematics and some will look more mathematical than others, but uh, I decided to put them together in a, in a two-minute piece here that would just give you a, a wow. flavor of what uh, video synthesis is about. Overload. Yeah, well, you're, you're, just, <laughs> you're just getting into it. <laughs> Hang on. So these all, uh, we're just seeing little pieces of these artworks, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, the artwork is there as long as you want to see it, uh, normally, when it's uh, on the computer. Uh, and for this one, I just wanted to uh, overwhelm you with volume and produce a variety of images and uh, get the idea across. Wow, that's like waves, a star. Should do a commercial for uh, Chrysler. Yeah, maybe. I'd love to use these in commercials. They're pretty uh, eye-catching. That yeah, doesn't look like they would detract from the message either. Yeah. I should say that, that all of this was created uh, on, on a Macintosh computer uh, and a semi-affordable uh, home machine. That's pretty affordable now. This is a low-end machine. Uh, the, the, the part that wasn't done on the Macintosh is the part you don't see. Uh, I use some of my video skills to put this together. Normally when you're slowing, showing slides like this, there's a two or three second gap in between images as it's loaded off the disk. And in this case, I just uh, clipped those out on uh, you know, just using video editing techniques. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, wow. That one looked uh, concrete there. Yeah, concrete highway. <laughs> Maybe it was asphalt. So, so you say there's 120 of these things. How many seconds each? Uh, about a second each here. So this is about 25% uh, about of your library. <coughs> yeah, something like that. It, it wasn't selected with particular care. I just uh, grabbed a quarter of it and used it. This isn't the cream of the crop. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's a, a random selection. Yeah, that's that's the end of it. Okay, well, that was Hud Nordine's incredible collage of video synthesis artworks. In a minute, Hud's going to teach us how to use the synthesizer he made them with. But for now, think of the ecosystem as a giant database and the extant species as a set of stable genetic eigenstates. You wouldn't wipe out your own database, would you? Well, watch this. There was a time when hundreds of elephants were being slaughtered every day. Then in 1989, a worldwide ban on ivory was created to protect the elephant families left behind. But in 1992, some countries want to end the ban and will have to wonder what was the point of the last two years. Call the African Wildlife Foundation. Don't let the slaughter start again. I guess, huh? Okay. okay. Welcome back to High Tech Heroes. Video synthesis Hud Nordine is here, and he's been showing us some of the, his video synthesis artworks. Now you're going to show us in detail how you create these things, right, Hud? Yeah, just keep track of time. Uh, this is a Mac 2. This is a program I've written called VidSynth, uh, short for video synthesizer. And uh, let me open a window up here, which is uh, the demo. That's just some, something to work with. This, this thing that's in the background is uh, just another large window that's filling up the desktop. I just put it there for visual interest. Um, so, so what are we seeing there? What are we seeing? This, for instance, is a, a function f of x, y equals x. It's a, um, you, you don't have to worry about the mathematics, but this happens to be a plane so in three dimensions. So this is x, and that's y? Right. Okay. It's a plane in three dimensions that uh, passes through the y-axis at a 45-degree angle. And uh, like map makers uh, uh, so, signify so elevation. Like map makers, this thing is elevation, and you're you're sort of having the colors either roll down or climb up the surface. Right. Uh, okay. Elevation above the plane in this case, instead of the elevation above sea level, is marked by color. Okay. So what other but, functions? But there's there? a lot more interesting function. That's just uh, one that happens to uh, uh, start things out. Uh, let's look at uh, x mod y. Okay, now it takes a while to draw. What's happening there? It takes a while to draw. It's computing the uh, numeric values uh, of each pixel. Oh, so for every point there, it's got to it's got to do some equation right. value. These are functions okay. of two variables, and we take the x address, the horizontal address, mm -hmm. and, the, and the vertical address, plug those two numbers into a function, and get back one number, and compute all those numbers. Now those numbers are not colors until no. you pass them through a color lookup table. Now are these colors? I mean, in the hardware, can you change those? Or are they all the same? Uh, really easy to change, and that's uh, a, a second feature. It's, a, it's really a second uh, space that this program works in, besides the, the f expression which uh, uh, basically defines the shape and sort of the color of the object. You can define the colors drastically, um, and I've got a bunch of uh, predefined ones. There's a pretty boring one, gray, cyan. Well, let me get down some good ones. Um, okay. These are all 256 color tables. Well, now I tables. can't see this thing. Is there a way to do that so that we can oh, see that? Sure. Stick with mascara. Okay. Okay, it's that easy to, to change the, the set of colors that you're using to represent these altitudes. Okay. Okay. Now, um, how do you, uh, let's see, how do you create a function? I mean, if I wanted to make a new function that wasn't, uh, what do you say this one is? Uh, it's x mod y. x modulo y. Modulo y. Yeah. Um, there's a uh, a general way of doing that, besides using all the canned functions that I've supplied, which is like some hundred functions that happen to work good visually, is to use the uh, um, expression definition feature. 
right now we're on X mod Y, and that's X mod Y. If we wanted to change that to X, uh, an easy one is X, X or Y, logical operation. Uh, okay. Uh, exclusive, so that's exclusive or. Exclusive or. Is it just like C then? All right. I can test the value uh, uh, at, at various points, see what it's going to be, mm -hmm. but let's draw that. Oh, okay. So now it's doing exclusive or X exclusive or Y for every every point inside this window. Right. Okay. So this is this is uh, it takes you way beyond the things that I've canned and, and supplied. You can uh, just go crazy and uh, enter any kind of expression you want. And in fact, you know, like that eyeball that was in the uh, previous tape was a fairly complicated expression. Yeah. Well, we don't have a lot of time to, to do that right now. But uh, now, once you have these, could you like can you transform them or change them somehow? Yeah. Or? There's there's some easier ways of of just changing the uh, basic set of functions instead of typing your own um, expressions in. For instance, I can stretch that one. Now these look kind of similar. What is that? Well, th these are all based on this, uh, so this thing in like the clear button. an original uh, picture, and then this is what happens. The diamond shape, right. So this the is the, the top one in the list is rotation. Uh -huh. The next one is perspective view as if it was tilted back. Next one's mapped to a cylinder, next to a sphere. And there's a whole bunch of them. OK. So, now Okay, well, let's see some of them. Okay, let, let's, let's take that thing we've got. Let's, let's not stretch it because that's, I, I predict, fairly boring. Um, okay. Let's uh, rotate it proportional to the distance from the... Uh, now, there's a number over here. Access. Right, you can uh, change these parameters. Um, you get different effects, uh, or it changes the, the magnitude of the effect mm -hmm. based on that. And you can chain, chain these things together. You can have this effect uh, followed by this effect, followed by this same effect again, okay. you know, reapply it. Now, we had that, ex we had that exclusive well, or thing, right? Yeah. That looked like butterflies or something. You're going to rotate that? Well, we're going we're gonna to we're swirl gonna... it uh, okay. proportional to the distance from the center. Oh, so it's kind of a, make it into a pinwheel. Right. Near, near the center, it won't move much. And, and the further away from the center you get, the, uh, the more it swirls. And this, this, this involves a lot of trigonometry, so it... Uh, now, why didn't it work its way out from the middle? Lots a little faster. Out. I just always start at the top and work down. It uh, oh, okay. is more efficient for the color graphics. Uh-huh. That's, uh, that's a lot of computing, I guess. Yeah, it's quite a bit. So uh, a lot of computers are powerful enough to do this? Or? Uh, sure. Yeah, most, most home computers today are. Um, back when uh, I first started getting interested in it, they weren't. Mm-hmm. So this is one of the first that was. This is a Mac 2? Mac 2, yeah. It has a good floating point unit on it, which I use extensively. Right, right. So um, now, I notice everything's moving. Is it possible to, uh, well, I think really, uh, yeah, is it possible to change animation at all? Oh, sure. Yeah, the, the animation technique is basically just changing the color table, moving it up. Um, for instance, in, we can define new color tables besides the ones that are defined. But if you just think of this as 256 colors, and I'm holding down a button now that is shifting these colors, and if you can see off to the side that uh, the image behind it is moving as well, that's how the animation happens. It's just this color or this table of colors that uh, is shifting over time. Uh, but there are some uh, different ways of animating things. For instance, uh, instead of just moving linear linearly, you can move with the uh, motion of a bouncing object. That's moving awfully quickly. Now, let's say we saw you change the colors, and you, you can set up the colors we saw on that table any yeah. way you want to. Right. Well, that's a little demo of that. Uh, uh, very short. Very short. <laughs> OK, we can select some range of colors in here and uh, do things to it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just hitting some buttons over here that uh, uh, you can, okay, you can so see, see the effect over the on, the, on the side of the dialogue. So this is where it's selected, it's all changing. Right. And, you know, if you want okay, it Now, what is that going to look green. like if we see it? Oh, we're seeing it there right now, we're outside seeing, the seeing box, it huh? Beside the box, yeah. If you want less blue, well, uh, lots of buttons. Yep. Let's, let's look at the uh, final result. Well, that's different. Well, and that bounce, that, that looks like a ball bouncing or exactly, something. Yeah, that's exactly the motion. It's, it's bouncing uh, up, the though. Physics of a bouncing ball. There you go. That's oh, okay. Not bouncing. <laughs> there, there, there are controls for controlling the direction. So can you make it like uh, rotate or something? Is that rotate what? Not this. I, I I, a different different functional rotate. Uh huh. Um, the, well, no. Uh, I guess um, you don't want to see rotation. No, I don't. Think okay. So. Okay. So um, you brought along another uh, video, right? Yeah. This was by a, a professional video artist that uh, I ran into in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. He. Uh, did video art and he wanted to see a background 
that Great. was more interesting. So um, we're going to see that now. So thank you for watching High Tech Heroes. Remember to tune into High Tech Heroes again next week. Same time, same station. And now to play us off the air, here's VidSynth Dance, an art video demonstrating some of the capabilities of the VidSynth video synthesizer. So kiss boy.
Thank you for joining us this week for High Tech Heroes. Be sure to watch High Tech Heroes again next week when we will bring you more entertaining information about the people and ideas behind the scenes in the high tech industry. And now, this is your announcer, Margie Foote, wishing you the best of luck and a pleasant week. Au revoir. This episode of High Tech Heroes has been made possible in part by grants from Merrick International of Mountain View, California, Linksys Incorporated of West Lafayette, Indiana, Kinetic Microscience of San Jose, California, and Cybernetic Arts of Sunnyvale, California.